in electromagnetism, one of the fundamental fields of physics. The introduction of Maxwell's equations was one of the most important aggregations of empirical facts in the history of physics. It took place in the 19th century, starting from basic experimental observations, and leading to the formulations of numerous mathematical equations, notably by Charles Augustin de Coulomb, Hans Christian Ørsted, Carl Friedrich Gauss, Jean-Baptiste Biot, Felix Savart, André-Marie Ampère, and Michael Faraday. The apparently disparate laws and phenomena of electricity and magnetism were integrated by James Clerk Maxwell, who published an early form of the equations, which modify Ampere's circuital law by introducing a displacement current term. He showed that these equations imply that light propagates as electromagnetic waves. His laws were reformulated by Oliver Heaviside in the more modern and compact vector calculus formalism he independently developed. Increasingly powerful mathematical descriptions of the electromagnetic field were developed, continuing into the 20th century, enabling the equations to take on simpler forms by advancing more sophisticated mathematics. Relationships among electricity, magnetism, and the speed of light the relationships among electricity, magnetism, and the speed of light can be summarized by the modern equation. The left-hand side is the speed of light and the right-hand side is a quantity related to the constants that appear in the equations governing electricity and magnetism. Although the right-hand side has units of velocity, it can be inferred from measurements of electric and magnetic forces, which involve no physical velocities. Therefore, establishing this relationship provided convincing evidence that light is an electromagnetic phenomenon. The discovery of this relationship started in 1855, when Wilhelm Eduard Weber and Rudolf Kohlrausch determined that there was a quantity related to electricity and magnetism. The ratio of the absolute electromagnetic unit of charge to the absolute electrostatic unit of charge, in determined that it should have units of velocity. They then measured this ratio by an experiment which involved charging and discharging a Leyden jar and measuring the magnetic force from the discharge current, and found a value 7008310700000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
This very subtle and paradoxical-sounding situation can perhaps be most easily understood in terms of the similar situation that exists with respect to Newton's second law of motion. In textbooks and in classrooms the law F equals Ma is attributed to Newton, but his second law was in fact F equals P where p is the time derivative of the momentum p. This seems a trivial enough fact until you realize that f equals p remains true in the context of special relativity. The equation f equals p is clearly visible in a glass case in the Wren Library of Trinity College, Cambridge, where Newton's manuscript is open to the relevant page. Maxwell's contribution to science in producing these equations lies in the correction he made to Ampere's circuital law in his 1861 paper on physical lines of force. He added the displacement current term to Ampere's circuital law and this enabled him to derive the electromagnetic wave equation in his later 1865 paper A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field and to demonstrate the fact that light is an electromagnetic wave. This fact was later confirmed experimentally by Heinrich Hertz in 1887. The physicist Richard Feynman predicted that, from a long view of the history of mankind, seen from, say, 10,000 years from now, there can be little doubt that the most significant event of the 19th century will be judged as Maxwell's discovery of the laws of electrodynamics. The American Civil War will pale into provincial insignificance in comparison with this important scientific event of the same decade, the concept of fields was introduced by, among others, Faraday. Albert Einstein wrote, The precise formulation of the time-space laws was the work of Maxwell. Imagine his feelings when the differential equations he had formulated proved to him that electromagnetic fields spread in the form of polarized waves, and at the speed of light. To few men in the world has such an experience been vouchsafed. It took physicists some decades to grasp the full significance of Maxwell's discovery. So bold was the leap that his genius forced upon the conceptions of his fellow workers. Heaviside worked to eliminate the potentials that Maxwell had used as the central concepts in his equations. This effort was somewhat controversial, though it was understood by 1884 that the potentials must propagate at the speed of light like the fields. Unlike the concept of instantaneous action at a distance like the then conception of gravitational potential on physical lines of force, the four equations we use today appeared separately in Maxwell's 1861 paper on physical lines of force. Equation in Maxwell's 1861 paper is B equals zero. Equation is Ampere's circuital law with Maxwell's addition of displacement current. This may be the most remarkable contribution of Maxwell's work, enabling him to derive the electromagnetic wave equation in his 1865 paper A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field, showing that light is an electromagnetic wave. This lent the equations their full significance with respect to understanding the nature of the phenomena he elucidated. Equation is Gauss's law. Equation expresses what Oliver Heaviside referred to as Faraday's law, which addresses the time-variant aspect of electromagnetic induction but not the one induced by motion. Faraday's original flux law accounted for both. Maxwell deals with the motion-related aspect of electromagnetic induction, V times B, in equation, which is the same as equation in Maxwell's original equations is listed below. It is expressed today as the force law equation, F equals Q, which sits adjacent to Maxwell's equations and bears the name Lorentz force. Even though Maxwell derived it when Lawrence was still a young boy, the difference between the B and the H vectors can be traced back to Maxwell's 1855 paper entitled On Faraday's Lines of Force which was read to the Cambridge Philosophical Society. The paper presented a simplified model of Faraday's work, and how the two phenomena were related. He reduced all of the current knowledge into a linked set of differential equations. 
It is later clarified in his concept of a sea of molecular vortices that appears in his 1861 paper on physical lines of force. Within that context, H represented pure vorticity, whereas B was a weighted vorticity that was weighted for the density of the vortex C. Maxwell considered magnetic permeability micro to be a measure of the density of the vortex C. Hence the relationship, magnetic induction current causes a magnetic current density B equals mu H was essentially a rotational analogy to the linear electric current, relationship, electric convection current J equals rho V where rho is electric charge density. B was seen as a kind of magnetic current of vortices aligned in their axial planes, with H being the circumferential velocity of the vortices. With micro representing vortex density, it follows that the product of micro with vorticity H leads to the magnetic field denoted as B. The electric current equation can be viewed as a convective current of electric charge that involves linear motion. By analogy, the magnetic equation is an inductive current involving spin. There is no linear motion in the inductive current along the direction of the B vector. The magnetic inductive current represents lines of force. In particular, it represents lines of inverse square law force. The extension of the above considerations confirms that where B is to H, and where J is to Rho, then it necessarily follows from Gauss's law and from the equation of continuity of charge that T is to D, i.e., B parallels with E, whereas H parallels with D. Our dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field. In 1865 Maxwell published a dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field in which he showed that light was an electromagnetic phenomenon. Confusion over the term, Maxwell's equations, sometimes arises because it has been used for a set of eight equations that appeared in Part 3 of, Maxwell's 1865 paper A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field, entitled, General Equations of the Electromagnetic Field, and this confusion is compounded by the writing of six of those eight equations as three separate equations resulting in 20 equations and 20 unknowns. The eight original Maxwell's equations can be written in modern vector notation as follows. Notation H is the magnetizing field, which Maxwell called the magnetic intensity. J is the current density. D is the displacement field. Rho is the free charge density. A is the magnetic potential. E is called the electromotive force by Maxwell. The term electromotive force is nowadays used for voltage, but it is clear from the context that Maxwell's meaning corresponded more to the modern term electric field. Phi is the electric potential. Sigma is the electrical conductivity. Equation D, with the mu V times H term, is effectively the Lorentz force, similarly to equation of his 1861 paper. When Maxwell derives the electromagnetic wave equation in his 1865 paper, he uses equation D to cater for electromagnetic induction rather than Faraday's law of induction which is used in modern textbooks. However, Maxwell drops the mu V times H term from equation D when he is deriving the electromagnetic wave equation, as he considers the situation only from the rest frame. A Treatise on Electricity and Magnetism In A Treatise on Electricity and Magnetism, an 1873 treatise on electromagnetism written by James Clerk Maxwell, 11 general equations of the electromagnetic field are listed and these include the eight that are listed in the 1865 paper, Relativity. Maxwell's original equations are based on the idea that light travels through a sea of molecular vortices known as the luminiferous ether, and that the speed of light has to be respective to the reference frame of this ether. Measurements designed to measure the speed of the Earth through the ether conflicted with this notion, though. A more theoretical approach was suggested by Hendrik Lorentz along with George Fitzgerald and Joseph Lama. Both Lama and Lorentz derived the Lorentz transformation as one under which Maxwell's equations were invariant. Poincaré analyzed the coordination of moving clocks by exchanging light signals. 
He also established the mathematical group property of the Lorentz transformation. Sometimes this transformation is called the Fitzgerald Lorentz transformation or even the Fitzgerald Lorentz Einstein transformation. Albert Einstein dismissed the notion of the ether as an unnecessary one, and he concluded that Maxwell's equations predicted the existence of a fixed speed of light, independent of the velocity of the observer. Hence, he used the Maxwell's equations as the starting point for his special theory of relativity. In doing so, he established that the fitzgerald lorentz transformation is valid for all matter and space, and not just Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations played a key role in Einstein's groundbreaking scientific paper on special relativity. For example, in the opening paragraph of his paper, he began his theory by noting that a description of an electric conductor moving with respect to a magnet must generate a consistent set of fields, regardless of whether the force is calculated in the rest frame of the magnet or that of the conductor. The general theory of relativity has also had a close relationship with Maxwell's equations. For example, Theodore Kaluser and Oscar Klein in the 1920s showed that Maxwell's equations could be derived by extending general relativity into five physical dimensions. This strategy of using additional dimensions to unify different forces remains an active area of research in physics.